Hey, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to protect your financial assets in this financial crisis. And if you don't have financial assets right now, don't despair because I'm gonna teach you what to do when you finally do have them. This is going to be a series of videos starting with the metal silver. I'm gonna be showing you why I've been buying silver for almost a decade now also known as stacking silver, and why this is the metal of choice for most investors right now. I don't just mean small investors, I mean big investors, even as big as banks like JP Morgan, who have bought millions of ounces of silver. I'm also gonna be focusing on the difference between a passive and active investment, the gold to silver ratio, paper silver, also known as ETFs, I'll explain what that means shortly, and finally, what happens to silver during recessions. Now, if you're brand new to my channel, you've never seen me before, never seen any of my videos, I basically talk about personal finance and economics, as well as how to become more financially successful yourself. Even if you don't have any money or any assets right now, through these videos, just watching these videos, I'll teach you all of this. I'm not selling you anything, and this video isn't sponsored. I just make these videos for your benefit. So to be clear, I didn't grow up rich and wealthy. I wasn't brought up in a rich household or anything like that. Everything I have today, all my different businesses and assets, I built up from scratch using my own labor and learning how to invest. All of my videos are just my personal opinion and they do not constitute as financial advice. So with that said, let's talk about the two types of financial investments that you can make then. These are two things that you hardly ever see any financial experts or even economics professors or anything like that talking about. So I'm gonna give you a mini crash course in about 30 seconds right now. These are active and passive investments and it's absolutely paramount that you understand the difference between the two of these so you don't make financial investment mistakes. So let me give you an example now then. So the first one we'll talk about is an active investment. A great example of this then is if you owned a business, real estate or houses or stocks and shares. When you buy a house, for example, you're purchasing an asset because you're getting the land which then belongs to you and the house that sits on that land which also belongs to you. It's an asset because it can create money for you every single month through, let's say, rent. That's the difference between an asset and a liability. An asset creates money for you every month, a liability loses money for you every single month. So let's say that you purchase that house for 200,000 and you receive 1,000 every single month in rent, which you wisely use to pay off the mortgage. After 20 years, you will have received enough rent that you've paid off the mortgage every month, so it's unencumbered. Not only that, the value of the property will have gone up due to inflation as well as other factors. And the best thing about it is that you haven't paid off that mortgage the tenants, whoever they were that lived in that property during those last 20 years, they are the ones that have paid off the mortgage for you. So this type of investment pays you twice. This is why I say that real estate is the best active investment that you can ever purchase. But real estate does come with its challenges in that it isn't movable, it takes a lot longer to sell a house, for example, and it's very sensitive to high unemployment, like we're seeing now, and interest rate rises, which cause housing crashes. Compare this to gold and silver, which is a passive investment. Gold and silver is simply a store of wealth. It doesn't give you a monthly income like a house would, it doesn't pay you dividends like a, a stock or share would, and you don't make monthly profits like a business would. So this is why gold and silver is a passive investment, because it only pays you once. But you don't buy gold and silver for the income. You buy gold and silver as a store of wealth. I personally see gold and silver as a store of value that is very different to real estate, stocks, businesses, etc because where they are very difficult to move, gold and silver is easily movable. It stores its value in a very small concentrated area, and it's very easy to sell if you need cash quickly. You can literally take a gold or silver coin, walk into any pawnbroker and sell that the same day. So overall, each asset class that I just mentioned there, passive investment versus a, an active investment, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. So you've just got to think which is right for you. 
Now, if you're a loyal subscriber, you know what to do at this point in every video for me by clicking the like button below. I appreciate it so much, thank you. Now we're going to talk about the gold to silver ratio. This basically means how many ounces of silver it costs at today's price to buy one ounce of gold. So in 1970, it took 18 ounces of silver, just like these silver coins here, to buy one ounce of gold. So this is a one ounce coin. You can already see the difference actually in size. Just 30 years later in the year 2000, it then took 55 ounces of silver to equal the same value as one ounce of gold. So as of right now filming this in May of 2020, you may be absolutely staggered to find that it actually takes 115 ounces of silver to equal just this tiny one ounce gold coin right here. And in March, less than a couple of months ago, was the highest gold to silver ratio ever recorded at 120 ounces of silver to equal just one ounce of gold. The average over the last 20 years has been about 70 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold, give or take. So this may leave you wondering what's going on right now then with silver. If the average has always been around 70 to one, then why is it 115 to one right now? I can only give you my personal opinion on this, and that is that I think that silver is massively undervalued right now in this current economic time. Many people are rushing to gold in order to secure their money, their wealth, whatever you wanna say, because gold has and always will be a safe haven in times of economic turmoil. Silver simply hasn't caught up yet, but it will. It almost always does. And we can see what silver did in the last recession as we track that to gold, and you can see that silver boomed during the 2008 onwards recession, but it did take a few years to do that. The thing to understand about silver is it's mainly an industrial metal. I know most people don't think of it like that, but it mainly is an industrial metal. And what we're seeing is that it's getting used more and more, especially as industrial and technological advancements come every single year. Combined with this, it's getting more and more expensive to mine silver now. Before it was a lot easier, what we call low hanging fruit. It was a lot easier to get silver. Now mines are having to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the ground. And what you'll notice, which is quite surprising, is that some mines are actually closing down because the price to actually buy silver, or let's say the spot price or just above spot, can often be less, especially right now, than it is to mine the metal. So what's going on there then? Well, I'll come back to that in a second, but let me just give you the stats around silver. Coins and bars like the ones I'm showing you here only account for around 20% roughly of the annual silver consumption market. Whereas if you compare this to uh, industrial, technological, and jewelry, that equates to about 80% of the entire market. And it's just not cost effective to try and recycle or scrape out the small fragments of silver that are on technological devices like let's say laptops or phones and things. So a lot of this unfortunately ends up in landfill never to be seen again. So this is also silver that's leaving the market every single year. And you know, silver isn't like other items. There is a finite supply of it. And if a lot of it's going to landfill every year and it's getting harder and harder to mine, this is just simple common sense. Silver will have to increase in value in the long run. And this is one thing you'll notice about my advice in everything I teach you. I don't overcomplicate everything. I keep everything as simple and common sense as I possibly can so that anyone can understand this stuff. Silver jewelry is the exception to this then. Of that 80% that I mentioned, about 30% of that is silver jewelry, which you know if you own any jewelry or, or, or someone in your family owns jewelry, it doesn't get lost very often. So that's the exception to that 80% that rule. 30% of it will stay in circulation as jewelry, but as much as that 50% eventually could be lost, in Great Britain over the last hundreds of years, silver has always been a store of wealth for the rich. 
you only have to visit any stately home to see the sheer scale of silver collections in every single one of these houses. The other reason the rich would keep silver like this is because they could and often did sell it in times of financial difficulty. One thing to be careful of then when you hear experts talking about gold and silver on TV and the money shows and the like is that they are talking not about physical gold and silver but they're talking about ETFs. But this is in my opinion the completely wrong thing to analyze. You really only want to be listening to the expert advice of people who are talking about physical metals, not ETFs. You might also hear this referred to as the spot price. That means the actual global value of say silver or gold anywhere in the world in a set currency, that is the spot price. Now, you would never necessarily be able to purchase the metal at the spot price. You would usually pay a premium above that and that is how you get your refined metals. The reason I'm not a big fan of the ETFs is because I personally believe they're manipulated and we have evidence that a number of ETFs are manipulated because there have been some quite high profile charges in recent years against traders on certain desks. JP Morgan was the most high profile one of late. But as I said, JP Morgan has got millions of ounces of silver we actually don't know exactly how many ounces of silver they have, but this is a big worry for a lot of investors because they're concerned that JP Morgan could manipulate the silver supply. Now, this isn't necessarily illegal to own vast amounts of a metal like that. This has been going on in other commodities for a long time now. Many people think that when they invest into an ETF that they are actually investing into actual physical silver and gold, but this usually isn't true. You're actually investing into a fund, not necessarily physical silver and gold. And it's actually said by a lot of experts that there are a number of multiple times more metals in these funds than there are that exists in the planet. So that tells you that it's being manipulated somewhere. For this reason, I prefer physical silver that I can actually hold in my hand. I can access it anytime by going to the vault, either in the USA, I have a vault there, or a, in the UK. And the great thing about the vault here in the UK is my vault is under armed guards. And if you know anything about the UK, there's no guns in the UK. So this is really beneficial. And if you're looking for a vault, just make sure that the vault that you use is at specifically a metals vault and they do have armed guards there. The bulk of my silver is actually under armed guard in a USA vault because I could get a much better price on the silver uh, by buying it in bulk at a lower premium as well than the silver that I have here in the UK where I had to pay VAT, which stands for value added tax. Not sure where that expression came from because there is absolutely no value added on that tax. <laughs> Not for us anyway, maybe for the government gets value. And that rate is an eye-watering, are you ready for it? 20%. So if you buy, you purchase physical silver in the UK and most parts of Europe as well, you are gonna pay VAT on top of that. However, I found a loophole to that and that is that if you don't take ownership of the physical metal itself, you don't have to pay the VAT. There are many mints that do this now. Just look on, you can look online, look in your local area at mints who actually sell the metal and store it for you. This way you will be able to buy at a much lower premium and they'll store it for you so you don't have to lose that 20% VAT. So as you've probably guessed, I don't think it's a good idea to invest into ETFs unless that fund actually keeps the physical metal in a vault, but even then I personally wouldn't. Now, before I come on to what happens to silver in a recession, what I'd like you to do in the comments below is just to ask me any questions that you've got on silver. And what I'll do is I'll create a Q&A video in the near future to answer all of your questions around physical silver. So just drop those comments any point from now onwards towards the end of the video. If you like this video and you've been getting a lot of value from it so far and you haven't already done so, 
I would please ask you to do me a big favor and click the like button below. I know some people might find that annoying that I ask for it and why does Neil ask for us to click the like button? The reason for that is, I don't know why, I don't know if it's because my videos can be quite, quite uh, controversial at times, but YouTube doesn't always index my videos, doesn't show them to people. Uh, that's why some of the videos on my channel, people say, why have these videos got no views? Uh, sometimes it's just because they're controversial, they don't get ranked. So what happens is when you click that like button for me, it actually tells YouTube that this is a good video and they actually list it. So if people before you hadn't clicked the like button, you probably wouldn't see this video yourself. And if you're a subscriber, you probably would never have seen my videos. So if you do that for me, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now let's look at what happened to the gold and silver price during the 2008 recession then. With all the stimulus being printed around the world, this money will have to go back to assets like stocks, houses, metals, etc. And with silver being both a precious metal and an industrial metal, and the fact that the price hasn't moved in a long time, added to the fact that gold to silver ratio is at an extreme high, I personally think that silver is going to make the biggest move in the future. And that's why I'm in silver over gold. Silver doesn't tend to boom at the start of a financial crisis or a recession like gold does, but it does tend to boom a little later on because it's always later than gold. If you're thinking that you'd like to buy silver, the problem you may have right now is actually getting your hands on some physical silver because a lot of the mints are sold out and have been for weeks and even months. I'm able to get small quantities from my UK suppliers and I've continued to do this for my mentoring clients during this time. This is a global issue in that many of the mints and dealerships have simply closed their doors temporarily, often as a result of many silver mines temporarily closing, this is at a time when there is already a huge spike in demand for metals and people simply can't get any. This is exacerbating the price and supply. If you want to see a recent video of me talking about the lack of supply, I'll add the link at the end of this video. I think one of the points I wanna get across to you here then is that there will never be one single investment strategy that's perfect for everyone. You've really got to look at what I'm talking about as a whole, as a big picture, by watching my other videos as well, looking at what's happening with housing, real estate, etc., and then make a decision based on what you think is right for your personal circumstances. For example, let's say you had a million in the bank. There's no way that you're going to go out and buy a million in silver because you probably couldn't even get your hands on that amount of supply anyway. But practically, where would you store that? Are you going to store it in your house? Probably not unless you have a, a huge house, but then you've got the risk of security. On the flip side, let's say you had 10,000 in the bank and you're not sure what to do with it. It might not be the best idea again to just go out and put it all into silver because you know, it's never good to be into one metal 100% or one investment 100% unless you really understand the fundamentals of investing and you are an expert in it. A good principle is to only invest 10% of your whole pot into one investment. So that could be 10% into silver, 10% into gold, 10% into a deposit in let's say a house, so you've got some real estate, 10% into another house in down the street or in a different area, 10% into this one stock here, 10% into another stock, or you could put 10% into a mutual fund. This way you're diversified. So you might be wondering, so why did you go all in on silver then, Neil? Doesn't that go against what you've just said? Well, the simple reason is that I'm really well protected and diversified. So I can afford to play the long game with silver because personally right now, I can't see anything better for me, for my personal circumstances, to put my money into, to put cash into. I already have my businesses and investments and things like that. All these things create income streams for me. And even my businesses, my businesses are diversified, they're protected. I didn't do what a lot of people do and have businesses without thinking ahead to the future of what might happen to that business in the recession. You know, I like to study, I read a ton of books, I look at the mistakes that other people make so that I don't make those mistakes. You know, I'm a business mentor as well, I have a lot of mentoring clients. So all of this together, um, hopefully that explains why I'm in silver, but why I'm giving you slightly different advice, because again, I'm saying that 
your investment strategy needs to be specific to you, not my investment strategy. And as I said last week, I don't do short-term speculation, I don't gamble. So if I didn't have all the income streams that I do have, then I wouldn't be in silver right now. I'd be focusing on actually building things like businesses, for example. And I don't mean big businesses here, guys. I, I'm, you know, some of my businesses are very small. They're run by just a couple of people, but they bring in good cash flow because we leverage technology. So whether the price of silver explodes next week, next month, next year, or even next decade, it doesn't really matter to me because I'm in it for the long run. So let me give you my final tips now then. The question that everyone is asking me in the comments, I must have had this dozens of times in the last couple of weeks is, Neil, if I've got cash in the bank, what should I do with it right now? Well, if you've got say 10 or 20,000 just sat there in the bank and you're worried about inflation, eating away at that, that money, then silver could be a good investment for you. It could be. But just remember what I said, it doesn't come without its risks of security and storage because of just how much silver is equivalent to one ounce of gold. And you've got to be willing to hold silver for the long term, over a decade if necessary. It isn't a short-term speculation metal. If you have more than 20,000 in the bank, you're simply not going to be able to purchase this amount of silver right now in this economic market crisis, we could say, and you know, store that in your house. It's just too much to store and the security risk there is very high. So you could do what I've done. I don't store any metals in my house at all because it's just too high risk, especially here in the UK. So my house is not far from my studio here. I definitely don't store metals there because in the UK, we're not allowed weapons. We're not even allowed mace. So I wouldn't ever wanna be put in that position if my house was robbed. Your other option is gold which is a much more concentrated store of wealth. You can even carry it around in your pocket with you. You could you know, carry five, 10 ounces around in your pockets uh, compared to if you had to carry that amount in silver, you would need a donkey or something to carry it for you. I honestly believe though that silver is the best investment right now. I'm personally not buying any gold. If I'm buying metals, I'm buying silver. But coming back to the point, remember what I said, these are metals that are, are simply a store of value. They won't pay you a dividend. They won't pay you rent every month. They will just sit there collecting dust. So if you've got a lot of cash just sat there, you really don't know what to do with it. Probably your best bet is gonna be a mutual fund or real estate actually buying a rental or more than one rental, but you've gotta be in these things for the long term. If you've seen my video, you know what I think is happening with stocks and shares and real estate right now. I am not optimistic about them at all. I certainly wouldn't be buying any of those items unless I was gonna keep them for at least a decade, if not 20, 30 years. That's the only time I would be buying those items. I mean, look, let, let's, let's look at the facts here. If Warren Buffett is losing billions of dollars in the market, there's no hope for you or I. So let's say that you've got a hundred thousand or, or, or a couple hundred thousand or something like that. Your best bet is probably a little bit of silver, a little bit of gold into a mutual fund, into a real estate, but you've got to time this correctly. All right. I'm not saying don't buy real estate right now or stocks and shares. I'm just saying I personally wouldn't, but you've got to time this right. Maybe give it a couple of months, maybe give it a few months, watch what happens to the market. You know, I honestly think that houses are coming down in most Western countries. There's a few uh, deviations to that, but in the most part, I believe housing is coming down as a result of high unemployment. And that's the main issue behind it. There's a lot of other things. You should watch my other videos if you haven't already. That will explain a lot of the darker stuff that's actually happening in these markets. But remember all this stimulus money, it will go back to the 1%. That means it's gonna go into assets. It's gonna go into houses as well. It's gonna be go back into the stocks and shares market, and it will, uh, to some degree, go into metals. Um, so just bear all of this in mind for your investment strategy. But anyone that tells you that they can double your money or they've got some sort of get rich quick scheme or Ponzi scheme, run away. You know, guys, I, I promise you of this, just be really, really careful. 
I was caught out so much when I was younger. You know, a lot of people don't, don't really understand me, I don't think. They hear me talk about my mistakes I've made when I was younger, maybe, a, you know, 10 years ago, and they go, why would I listen to this fool if he ma made this mistake 10 years ago? And the way I always describe it is like when I was in the army. You know, I, again, probably some of you don't know, I served in the army for 10 years. I did real estate on my weekends whilst I was a soldier. I was a sergeant in the British army. And one thing that someone taught me, and this lesson stuck with me forever, is who would you rather go into battle with, right? Would you, and again, most of you would say, I don't even want to go into battle. But um, here's the example. Would you rather go in with a sergeant who has um, had lots of conflicts and won, or would you rather go into someone who's just left a military academy, has no experience in the field, but they've got their, I don't know, degree or whatever you want to call it, and they're an expert. And again, we're, we're, we're giving the example of economists here, or someone who has actually gone through the markets and gone through the, the battles. Um, and that's really what I've done. So again, I don't claim to be like a world Nobel Prize winning economist, all I can say to you is that I've been through all these battles and I've learned from my mistakes. And um, if some of you don't like that and you want to listen to some of these people straight out of university with their degrees, by all means, go and do that. Watch the news um, with all their propaganda. Um, but if you want to hear the truth from me and what I've been through, then uh, my channel might be right for you. So final points then. I personally wouldn't recommend that you go all in on Bitcoin right now. I know there's a lot of people that are saying to go all in on Bitcoin. With Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, I'm still on the fence with crypto. I think they have their place. I think they're great, but I wouldn't go all in. I wouldn't put everything I own into cryptocurrencies. And again, I'm not bashing Bitcoin. I actually own Bitcoin. I'm just saying that I wouldn't go all in on it. And you know, last month people were going crazy at me in the comments, bashing me. How dare you say Bitcoin isn't a store of value? How dare you say that? Um, and I said, because that is my prediction. I'm not always right, but four out of five of my predictions are accurate. You can go back a couple of years on my channel, you'll see they're accurate. So when I said Bitcoin isn't a store of value, as I, I don't see it, that's simply because I was only going off the data I had Gold and silver, I have that data going back 100 years. I can see that it's a store of value in times of recessions and the like. We didn't have that data for Bitcoin, so we didn't know if it was a store of value. I said personally, I didn't think it would be, but I, again, I wasn't 100% sure. And then that's exactly what we saw. Bitcoin pretty much matched the S&P 500. It went down almost 30% with it. Whereas if you look at gold, for example, that only went down about 2%. So that is why I said that, and again, I stand by that now. I think cryptocurrencies are good. I think they have a place. I'm just saying I don't see them as a store of value, and my thesis on that was proved correct over the last couple of months. Now, does that mean I think they're bad? No, I think they will go up. I definitely think crypto is gonna go up in value. I, we just don't know when it's gonna go up. But this video is really about silver. I'm sure I'm going to get loads of Bitcoin people bashing me now over my comments again. But please, look, I'm open to having my mind changed. I really am. I'm an open book. If you can educate me on something that I don't know about and correct me, please do that because I actually do enjoy that. So in my upcoming videos, I'm going to be doing more on investing and business and the like. I'll also be sharing with you some of the businesses and some of the income streams that I've built from scratch. Like I said at the beginning, I didn't grow up rich. Uh, and you know now I was in the army for 10 years. So I had to learn all this. I had to learn about investing and real estate whilst I was serving in the army. So I really have built all of this knowledge up from scratch. So please let me know in the comments below what video you would like me to, to make next for you. I would love to do that. I get most of my ideas from you, my subscribers. So I really appreciate all of you. So thanks so much for watching today. If you like my videos, you like my channel, please share it. Share it with your friends, your colleagues, anyone that you think needs to know an alternative angle on investments and the markets uh, because you can't always rely on what you see and hear in the media as you've probably seen on a couple of my other videos where I show you evidence that the media is actually putting out propaganda, not necessarily factual news. And if you haven't clicked the like button, come on, even if you never do this, 
do me a favor, just click it today. I really appreciate you. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, why not subscribe? And you'll get more of these videos as they come out. Apart from that, see you next week. Take care.